I've been a supporter of the tracing wheel basically since I began sewing. It's extremely useful for transferring marks onto multiple layers of fabric, but recently I've stopped using the tracing wheel and started another technique instead, the tailor's tack. You might be wondering why I've opted for tailor's tacks if the tracing wheel was working well. It was, but it comes with its limitations. Firstly, if you're using certain types of fabric like wool for instance, Carbon copy paper marks often rub off easily, and if you're handling your work for extended durations of time, it's likely you'll lose important marks, or even potentially your stitch line. There's a good chance you'll end up having to thread trace the lines anyways, which defeats the purpose of using the tracing wheel and copy paper in the first place. Secondly, the paper that comes with tracing wheels usually isn't very big. Therefore, there's a possibility that for bigger projects, you'll have to move and shift the paper around, which in turn can also move your fabric around, which kind of distorts things and might possibly ruin your work. And finally, you have to have a very flat and firm surface to get accurate marks from your tracing wheel. I often sew on my drawing room floor, and it has these very old wooden boards with cracks between the planks. These cracks are an absolute nightmare for tracing paper. On the other hand, they cause no issues for the tailor's tack. As an aside, I've also dropped an absurd amount of pins between these floorboards. On top of this, the tailor's tack also serves as a more permanent alternative to chalk, which makes this technique incredibly useful with certain types of fabric, as well as projects that you handle very frequently. There are two different ways that I've seen the tailor's tack done, and the method I'll be demonstrating today is, in my opinion, a far quicker one, and it's much more ideal for marking not only small lines like on darts, but also extended seams like those of a cloak or skirt. It is a little bit labor intensive at first, but if we take into account the amount of time it would take to trace with a tracing wheel and continuously keep moving your paper around to mark it on a large piece of fabric, I actually think in all honesty the tailor's tack is quicker and it won't disappear unless you pull the thread out. Additionally, you'll be able to skip the step of thread tracing, so again that means the tailor's tack is coming in strong. To complete these tailor's tacks, all you're going to need is a sewing needle, thimble, embroidery scissors, and some basting thread or any cheap thread that you don't mind wasting. I personally like to use affordable cotton thread for this and in a contrasting color from my fabric so that way I can see the marks much easier. Waxing your thread with beeswax also makes this process a little bit easier, but some wax can stain silk fabric, so be a little bit careful with this and test the waxed thread against your fabric first. To begin with, you're going to need your two layers of fabric with all the lines marked. They should be joined up exactly as you cut them, so essentially duplicates of one another. Thread your needle so that there are two even strands of thread. Basically, the thread needs to be doubled up but don't knot the end. If you're choosing to wax your thread, this is the time to do so. Now the process is quite simple. All you need to do is take a basting stitch going down into and then up out of the fabric. Be sure to leave a long tail of thread at the start. These can be quite wide and spread apart stitches, especially if your seam is a long one and not as detailed. For smaller, more detailed lines like that of a dart, closer set stitches are needed. Instead of pulling your thread tight like you would with the basting stitch, you'll want to leave just a little bit of space at each loop, about enough to be able to fit an index finger, though I personally like to leave a little bit more room. Once you reach the end of your thread, again leave a long tail and snip your thread. Don't knot it. Continue this process as many times as needed until you've marked your lines. Here comes the magical part. Carefully move apart the two layers from the inside. You'll notice that the extra space you left at the top of each loop is now tightening. At the inside of the two layers, there will be threads, and right at the center of each thread, take a little snip, which will allow the two layers of fabric to separate. Refrain from pulling on the thread, just give it a quick snip and leave it be. And that's it! Now both of your fabric layers should be marked in the same place. I find this to be so much more straightforward than using the tracing wheel, and you don't need a completely flat surface to do this method. I hope this video was helpful. I'm still pretty tired from the berry dress project in all honesty, so I just wanted to release something short and useful this week. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all on Thursday for another video.